Hey, this is Brendan from Panic at the Disco. You're listening to the Kerrang! Podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Kerrang! Magazine podcast, a downloadable slice of the best new music, interviews and news headlines. My name is Simon Young and this week I'm joined by Kerrang!'s very own Katie Parsons. How the heck are you? Very well, thank you, Simon. And how are you? I'm good. I'm very good, thank you. Uh, a bit jet-lagged. You'll find out why later. Uh, I've been on a plane, obviously. Of course. Uh, International ever... jet-setter. Have you ever been tube-lagged? Tube lagged. I've fallen asleep on the tube and not woken up where I am, and maybe that is the effect of the London Underground, so I will say yes, I have. I, I fell asleep on the, uh, the Victoria Line and woke up in 1976, which is a bit weird. Is there a TV show about that? Are you a cop? <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> I was accused of being a narc by Panic at the Disco in this week's interview, which is weird, but uh, I did get there. An narcoleptic? <laughs> yes. Because you're jet lagged? Yes, uh, it's very, very true, and uh, I must remember to have the microphone in front of my face when I do talk, because it does help. So what have you been up to recently? You've been in 18 shows in three days, as usual. I've been taking a bit of a breather, actually, getting ready for the immense uh, Kerrang! Awards Week, which is coming up uh, in August, around the 17th of August, like a solid week of shows at the Barfly. And I'm not just plugging this, I'm generally actually having to physically prepare for this, because I will be at the Barfly every night for seven days, watching at least three acts, probably finding it quite difficult to fit in dinner. Uh, how about uh, taking a little hip flask of soup? Yeah, maybe a little straw. Maybe with some of those amazing, like, kind of beer goggle things, but maybe with some, like, Heinz tomato soup nice. running through them. Look like blood, which is pretty metal. I find that a little sharp for my palate, but uh, each to their own. But this week, uh, there's chat from Panic at the Disco, and there's new music from Underminded, Exit 10, and Malefice, as chosen by Katie. This is true. I'm going to bring the mosh. Bring the mosh each and every day to the office, which... Uh, Makes it hard to concentrate sometimes. Here are the news headlines in this week's Kerrang! magazine. Enter Shikari to headline this year's All-Star Kerrang! Day of Rock. Our new record is going to be as heavy as fuck, promise Slipknot. Against me, take a leap to the majors. Ozzy inducted into Birmingham's Walk of Stars. And Arch Enemy to headline Kerrang! Award Show at London's Barfly in August. Will you be uh, bringing the mosh to that particular show? I will be. In fact, I'm going to be talking a little bit about that show later as uh, support for that show has been announced in the form of Malefice, which are one of the bands that I'll be playing a little later on. Great. But in this week's live section, Wembley Stadium gets its metallic baptism from Metallica. <laughs> Foo Fighters blow off studio cobwebs at Secret London show. So secret, Paul Brannigan sneaked off to it without telling anyone. Yeah, it's... I heard a rumour and then he was like, oh, I'm just popping out. Oh yeah, what, to get a cup of tea? Nah, to watch Foo Fighters. Yeah. Bad Paul Brannigan. <laughs> Glassjaw reward those who've kept the faith at London's Barfly. How did they reward them? Uh, with a set of music, I believe. Cool. Not just gifts. Yeah, maybe, like little party bags, like going home bags afterwards, <laughs> and each of them had a glass jaw inside, many which were smashed on exit. <laughs> Were there any of those little swizzle stick uh, sherbet dib packets dabs. of fun? Yeah, dib dabs. Sherbet dib dabs, um, some little stickers to put in your colouring book maybe, a little selection of small crayons and a glass jaw. I feel very uh, sad that I missed out on, on the party bag. I wasn't there, but I bought one on eBay for £300 the next day. Cool. And uh, thank you for that £300. I've got my sources. Uh, and finally, in this section, Canadian punk as some 41 fall drastically short of the mark at the Astoria. And as we'll find out, it's not their week in Kerrang! magazine. We review albums by Sum41, who expand their horizons with mixed results with Underclass Hero. Aww. Shame. Swedish metalers entombed prove they're kings of death and roll with Serpent Saints. Silverchair make difficult but an unexpectedly brilliant comeback with Young Modern. Woo! Garbage offer career spanning but limited best of with absolute garbage. And the headline? A load of rubbish? Almost. Total rubbish? Almost. Pure rubbish? Yes. <laughs> Peerless punk rock troubadours against me unleash big surprises on major label debut. And we find out where to start with Dinosaur Jr. I'm going to head off to Vegas for a bit, um, just for a quick chat with Panic at the Disco. So uh, I'll just be a little while. Okay. Could I borrow that £200 you've got sitting in front of you? Yeah, hold on. I just have to count it in 20. Cool. Well, if, if I do win, you can have what I've just borrowed back. Bye, have fun. Uh, 
I'm sitting in a car with panic at the disco. Uh, what kind of car is it, Brendan? Uh, this is an Audi A4 S line, uh, 2006. A recent purchase, then? Uh, in the yeah, last year, yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's the license plate number? <clears throat> it's uh, uh, Las Vegas registered. Um, uh, I'm actually not really sure. You can check later. But. <laughs> Cool. Um, so you've uh, been going to the cinema uh, this week. Uh, could you give us a quick review of what you've just seen, Jonathan? Um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, released on July 11, 2007. Cool. And uh, was it the uh, wizard experience you were hoping for? Yeah, it was really good. Um, my girlfriend reads the books, so... Not a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> she, filled me in. She, she, she reads the books and fills me in on the stuff that was different in the movies and the books so I kind of have like so different feel opinions like read the book. I, feel yeah. like I feel like I Harry know Potter's what people that have read the book must feel like after they've seen the movie wow. but uh no <laughs> all in all it was a very pleasant experience and I'm even more anxious for the next one you're approaching the concession stand uh, what do you buy Sour Patch Kids good choice and a bottle of water cool so what are Sour Patch Kids it's a oh it's one of the best American-made candies. They're probably not even made in America, but yeah, no, they ship them to us from wherever. Like, they're basically like sour gummy bears, bears, but with like sweet and sour, sour powder, pow- like sugar powder. all over them. Does it hurt your mouth if you eat a whole package? Yeah, yeah. 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 Is that the best part. Yeah, pain is pleasure. It, it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Cool, uh, Brendan. What have you seen recently? Um, tra- uh, Transformers actually was. I thought it was quite good. Were you a fan of the cartoon growing up? I actually was. I used to watch Transformers and Thundercats when I was really little. He's only 15. Considering yeah. I'm only tw- 12, I think it's you know safe to say I'm way ahead of my time, like with what I watch, you know. <laughs> so, Do you yeah. think Thundercats is slightly uh, misogynistic? Where Thundercats ho? Absolutely <laughs> not. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's well, the next question? <laughs> uh, what have you seen recently, Spencer? Um, I saw. Th- we saw a movie with some friends in LA called Once, and then I saw it again when uh, a couple weeks ago because um, I saw it was playing at a theater in town. It was a really small movie, but I guess it kind of caught on in film festivals, and uh, I think it was only made for it was made for like one hundred and twenty thousand dollars or something, which is like nothing. I think it was made in Ireland, but it's really cool. What's it about? Oh, it's it's really it's just about like. Stuff. It's just political. It's all it's political like... bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about this like uh, singer songwriter in Ireland that just plays on the streets uh, when he's not working in his dad's vacuum repair shop. Just his acoustic guitar songs, and uh, he's actually the singer of this band called The Frames, I believe, in real, in real life, right. and uh, it's just kind of his story. Yeah. yeah. Are you a fan of the Sour Patch Kids? Or do you go for a salty popcorn? Uh, I am a fan of the Sour Patch Kids, but they're kind of dangerous, like you said, with the sugar. Well, that's why you have to get a bottle of water. Well, no, that's why you have to just get nachos. <laughs> 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 it gives you an excuse, because when you just, that thick, yellow, orangish cheese mm, drizzling down your throat, it coats it so the sugar doesn't get to it. That's, then you can fill so up on much smarter, red vines. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's all about the uh, red vines and pib extra. That's yeah. The, uh, that's, good. that's the other move. <laughs> and what have you seen recently? Or popcorn. Oh, uh, French what? cinema. I've seen all of those. Plus, actually, if you bring the, up a French cinema, yeah, I saw this movie called The Valet a couple weeks ago. It's pretty funny. It's French subtitles, and uh, you know, I like French people. I like the language, and uh, the movie was funny. It's a bit of a silly romp, you know. <laughs> How many thumbs up? Uh, How many are available? I've only got two, <laughs> but one hand was uh, busy. Busy. <laughs> what? You know. <laughs> you know those. Friends. I have three hands. <laughs> you know those two French were getting men. thumbs up. One was busy <laughs> doing something else. <laughs> you know, slurping down some nacho cheese. What and so I'll give it one nacho. thumb up. What about you? What have you seen recently? Uh, I saw. Uh, Knocked up. Yes, oh, yeah. that's, oh, really that's good. That's pretty that's fun. Yeah. Did you see Eagle versus Shark? No. Oh, I want to see it's that. It's really too. funny. The Where'd guy from that? Flight of Concords. Where'd you see that at? Uh, yeah, Arclight? No, it was in LA. It's really good. It's really funny. Going back to the nachos, um, what is the orangey cheese made of, really, do you think? It doesn't matter. 
right, it's not really made of much. It's not cheese. I don't. I bet you there's absolutely no dairy product. It's just like a gelatin product, like some sort of like molasses made orange. That like when heated up, it t- tastes like that. It's sort yeah. of like molasses syrup. made orange. No, that's it. <laughs> yes. It's like what do you think it is? It's molasses made orange. With, like pepper. <laughs> that's yeah. what it is. Some pepper. Yeah. Uh, black <laughs> Black Dude, it's, I don't know what's worse, like the orange cheese or like the the like the processed jalapenos. At or the, the juice theater. that comes out of the hot dogs when you bite them. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in my juice, you mean like the carbonated water they cook them in so they yeah. kill all the germs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, in amongst all this uh, cinematic uh, frivolity, uh, you've been a bit busy uh, writing the follow-up to a fever you can't sweat well, out. Obviously we haven't. Because we've been seeing so many fucking movies. Well, we're not at the movies we think about writing songs. (laughs) Think about it. So will there be a Transformers-themed song? I mean, will there not be? That's the question. More than meets the eye. Well, which Transformer are you? Are you Bumblebee? Optimus Prime, baby, all the way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't into that indie bullshit when I was a kid, so... (laughs) I don't know what their fucking names are. I'm a... Thundercat, really at heart, not Transformers. Yeah, I I'm more. Of, what's the shark one? Oh, Street Sharks! Street shark. street I'm a Street shark. shark, man. Dude, imagine if they made a movie of that. Oh, I'm, Bucky, be... I'm more of a Bucky O'Hare kind Bucky of guy. O'Hare. I watch those two shows way more. I'm street a Mighty Shark guy. And Bucky O'Hare. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what were they thinking? So, <laughs> going back to the album. Remember um, when they had Mega Man <laughs> cartoons? Yeah, they yeah, had the Mega Man awesome. cartoons, and, and they had Mario cartoons, and they had Sonic the Hedgehog, and cartoons. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, they, they were yeah, all like equally show. good. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, what are we doing? <laughs> the album. Oh, can we just talk to you about that? That's for something very different. Uh, this is for our ears rather than eyes. Whoops. Are you a fucking narc? <laughs> Are, are you a 21 cop? Jump Street? We got 21 Jump. Ju- hey, we got guys, Greco and Depp. Greco and Depp in the car. Right I'm now. not wearing a wire. Uh, I can't prove it to you. Right. Right. I'm Take not. What the fuck off. is this? Take his pants off. <laughs> That's a cable. It's different. Oh. <laughs> You're on the big oh, microphone. Yeah. That's a Very 20 foot obvious. long microphone cable. It's, it's like the wires running under my belt. I lost cable. Oh, okay. All right. So tell us briefly about them without giving the game away. All right, we'll cooperate. Oh, uh, stage, one, to the, uh, stage one was mountains. Phase, let's call them phase. phase one was was the mountains, Mount Charleston, Nevada. Phase two. Phase two was Burbank slash North Hollywood, California. Tell them about phase slash three, Los John. Angeles, Tell which is kind three. of all the same, if you ask me. <laughs> and uh, phase three right now, uh, which is probably Final three phase. of three of three of eight. Three of four. Three of four. Eight no, phases. four. Fa- oh my God! Wow. Look the how biggest big out the sun. <laughs> that just eclipsed the sun. Jesus the biggest Christ. Christ. Come on. That's that Hummer? Hummer? Dude, that's a perfect point to bring up with your thing about Las Vegas. What's popular in Vegas? Big Lifted trucks. trucks. They're Bro, about three feet trucks. higher than they should be. You could fit a I child could, in the gap between the wheel and yeah, the arch. Yeah, I could go could. under that car. I could drive under that truck. Would you uh, climb under it and hold onto the pipes mm-hmm. underneath and like a? Max no, Katie and I will Cape tell Fear. you why. Because this guy, I can tell, has plans to go Froden in about five minutes. <laughs> He's going to go about five minutes up the road off into the road. desert. Off, right. off-roading. Froden. 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 Yeah, that's what they call that's it. That's what all the bros call it. They love it here, man. They, they love it. The Brodeo. It's actually... Yeah. The Brodeo. The Brodeo. And it, and the Brodeo. It's, it's actually <laughs> a slight misconception because people who... <laughs> people who like Lord of the Rings <laughs> also go Froding. Right. <laughs> Amongst the truck rallies popular in Vegas. Uh, I don't know if they're any more popular here than anywhere else, but uh, I'm sure they do all right. I'm sure. I don't know. It just the worst thing is that when you see the guy who's probably spent about five thousand dollars getting his truck to look like that, that one actually has dirt on it, so maybe he does go off road. But sometimes you see him in like pristine condition. You're just like, what would someone? Why would? What would the person drive that? What would they wear? Oh, I know exactly. Billabong. Right. Yeah. They only wear uh, muscles. No, 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 no. Really? Spencer, I think, has the exact yeah. uh, costume. <laughs> Spy sunglasses. Spy or Oakley. And a backwards Famous Stars and Straps hat, most likely. And lots of muscles. Lots of muscles, muscles. Lots of tan parts. Muscles. Tan muscles. Tan muscles. Tan muscles. Mustache? Lots of, like... No, no, no mustache. No, no, no. no. They've got a fox sticker on the back, along with a dragon sticker on the and back. And a Roxy sticker for their girlfriend. And a Roxy sticker because their girlfriend surfs. Um, but really, she just gives head to all the friends. That's sort of <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but I would if I had a call like that. But she, <laughs> calls, but she calls herself a surfer, right? 
does she literally hang loose? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Nicely done! Yeah, but she gets slapped a lot. Touche! <laughs> so, just oh back to the God. album. Uh, back to what album? In once. What? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, after yeah. that solar eclipse, I kind of lost <laughs> yeah. my train of thought. Yeah, back to reality. The, the biggest well, kind of world is blocked out of the sun, so we're in darkness. But in the darkness, could you sum up what the new album may sound like when you get around to recording it? Did you just say the darkness? Imagine Not the darkness. Just a candle. <laughs> <laughs> sorry? <laughs> Nothing. I'll, get, I'll play the it back in a album. bit. album. I don't know. Will there be songs? There will be songs. Be songs. I was talking about the phases before. We had one phase where we we wrote uh, uh, songs in Mount Charleston, and then we, we wrote some songs in the studio. Of the record into nineteen phases. <laughs> nineteen strict phases. <laughs> what will uh, phase we'll sixteen be like? Phase sixteen. Oh, phase uh, the bass phase guitar phase tracking. G, G chord. Yeah, <laughs> uh, tracking of all the songs written in G on bass. Will that be reflect? Oh, like a jazz fusion type thing. Well, yeah. In G. Pretty much. Cool. I mean, kind of hit it on the head there. Because we like to tune the guitar to the song, so we do every song that's in a key. You know, if there's five songs written in G minor, then we'll do all those together. In one phase. In one sitting. And then we pass on to a new phase. Yeah. You know, what's the saddest chord of all? D, D minor. minor. D minor. D minor. D minor. D minor. D minor. I was writing a song called Wake My Love Pump. And, uh, D minor. In D minor. So um, what happened to the uh, British accents you were going to do the podcast in? I'm not too good at accents. I always had a trouble speaking when I was a lot younger. So. What, 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 what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean no British accents? Like, what, what, what? Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. He always hears saying stuff like that. What? 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 So, uh, will you be putting these uh, accents? Oh, Alberto! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Will you be putting these accents into effect when you play the, the Cadence Fest on August 22nd? Maybe. Yeah. What can we expect from that show? British uh, accents. Lots of good accents. Yeah. I've been working on like 10 different accents. Pure, yeah. pure testosterone. <laughs> pure testosterone. Will you be arriving in pure Mars, Mars, City? Mars. We're going to arrive in an F 150 Triton V8 XLT. Raised about three feet off the ground. Watch and out. We're going to play testosterone infused rock anthems for everyone. It'll to hear. blow your asshole out and make your girlfriend love us more. You know? Will there be tits? <laughs> Titties, <laughs> beers, brats, brats, bruise, brats, bruise, boy bands, ball, bitches, <laughs> basketball, bong, basketball, basketball, big lighter. Basically, any B, <laughs> any B that. words is cool. Cool. We're gonna have and we're just going to be that. bouncing. We're going to be bouncing. We're going to have a you know? spelling bee on stage. Yeah, a with bee. Only bee words. Were you good at spelling bees? Uh, yeah, I was pretty good. I just saw, New just saw the, 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 video. the video of the guy, the kid who passed out and then stood up and then completed Finished the word it, correctly. Yeah. No one went on stage to help him. It was so insane. I'm not, I'm so it's so, <sighs> so funny. funny. He, here, here. Look, look at the guy. Look at the guy. That's him. Oh, the windows are tight. Oh He's got the... Biggest penis you've ever seen. Yeah. Hanging yeah. Hang from, from his, his shoulder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> guys that drive trucks like that don't need to watch. No, no, but here's the best thing. He's got tattoos, and I didn't even need to look at them because I know exactly what they look like. They're like, tribal, they're big, they're and they're obnoxious. Cause flames and skulls. Flames and skulls. Flames He's got a rose. And sharp things. A a really, like, barbed wire. Well, What's he called? Yeah, barbed wire. His name? How's it he guessed his name? Oh, uh, Toby. Seth. Seth, Seth Rick. Cash. Cash, cash. <laughs> Jesse. What would his nickname probably be? Jesse. Uh, his no, nickname? it's probably, probably Rick. No. Probably Josh. Yeah, it might be a Josh or. Could you be called uh, Gavin and still drive one of those? Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. Gavin yeah. Yeah. yeah, Kevin might be better. Kevin. Maybe Trent. What about Trent? Trent. Yeah. Trent. Yeah, maybe a Trent. If your name was Brock. Brock. If your name was Kevin Agunas, you you could drive one of those trucks. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Kev. So, uh, what can we expect apart from testosterone driven rock? Uh, yeah, on well, the well, album or on, on the, the show? At the Cadence Fest and Reading Stroke Festival. Hopefully we're going to play some more new songs. That's Hopefully what I hope. we play Hopefully. some more new songs. Hopefully there's uh, some surprises that we couldn't tell you about because then they wouldn't be surprises. We haven't made them up yet. <laughs> and we haven't made them up yet. <laughs> Whoops. We Will there be the human cannonball? Oh, potentially. Um, potentially. I'm not going to say anything on that. <laughs> We Maybe. Maybe. Brennan has been in circus We wanted to get for for, for, for Redding. We wanted to get a like a ten foot chain link fence on wheels that we could wheel out and put right at the front of the stage to play behind this year. Right. So the bottles, not chain link, more like plexiglass. Like plexiglass. But see, here's the thing. 
I th- I was thinking about that. We could have a fence, but then you have to deal with darts being thrown through the through the holes in the fence. Yeah, and I don't want to deal with darts. Darts are a 2007 spears. epidemic. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Darts are spears <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in smaller form. <laughs> so if you think about well, it, darts are small spears. They're just like small <laughs> spears. Small spear like. <laughs> The no, 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 darts are weaponry. small spears. Weaponry. Yeah. If you think about it. Spear Would the army weaponry. in 300 be a lot less threatening if they carried small darts rather than spears? Well, you know, that's the problem. That's what we're worried about. 300 was such a huge movie, and now everyone's going to be Everybody's influenced spears. that the kids love it. They're playing it's like the Fast video and Furious, game. you know? How many cars are racing after that? You know exactly. what I mean? How many people are, does it take to throw a, to throw darts at the band for it to just really Not stop? Darts. and? They're throw spears, sorry, small spears at the stage. Brendan's for it to stop. Have, we should have a shield. I'm going to have a dartboard. I'm going to have a dartboard. Run Running around with a dartboard. Well, I mean, on I my think, crotch and my I head. I think more than anything, we're all missing the fact that a dart could be pretty lethal to someone under a foot tall. <laughs> It'd be lethal to anybody over a foot tall. Anybody under small spears, more than three feet. <laughs> but if you're below one foot, then at that it's, point, you're, you're, you're safe. so it's like a special. You're, small, you're so you're small. so special. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will touch you. You're like, like a god. You're yeah. so special. Like a golden hawk. Oh. Invincible. You're so golden hog. unique. A golden hog of invincibility. You're so small. <laughs> so you're not gonna get it. <laughs> Walking up to somebody's a foot tall man. Under you are so unique. You're you so special. So special to me. You're so but, small. I would like that. <laughs> That's awesome. I would like to know someone that's more. What, what would the effects of Red Bull be on a person under a foot tall? Oh, deadly. Uh, I think they would actually... Could you power a small town with the energy that Isn't Red Bull, like, banned in, in parts of Europe? Oh, in France, of course. We couldn't get it at the show. Oh, right? No. Nah. bulk crap. But then, then, like, some guy was like, I know a guy <laughs> down at the shop who can I'll get I'll you guys three. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, one wink each. One what do you guys want, three Red Bulls? Three Red Bulls? Yeah. <laughs> and they cost some darts, please. Bucks each. But it was, it was worth it. It's worth it. for some darts, yeah. Worth it. Darts are important. Well, on that, thank you very much, Panic at the Disco. <laughs> uh, darts! Learned a lot on that one. <laughs> Here, oh. can you come and do these podcasts with us once a month? Because that is the well, fun. That's fun. <laughs> we should have our own radio show. When you we do should. our own podcast, we'll just talk and play we should songs. Yeah, we'll oh, hey, Simon. Hi. Uh, that, was, that was good. What a um, nice time you had. Well, it's, it's mostly freckles, but they do join up t- to uh, form something that would approach a tan. But uh, yeah, I had a very red face on the first day. But um, is that embarrassment or heat? Bit of both. Bit of both. Um, Did you win any money? I lost the lot. Um, it was good fun, but uh, we all played a game of uh, beer pong, which uh, involves um, twenty cups, two pitches of beer, and uh, two ping pong balls. And it'll get you drunk very quickly. And uh, I'm hoping to introduce it in time for the 2012 Olympics. I've been in training. I fancy my chances against the Cambodians. I've heard they're very strong beer pongers. Yeah, <laughs> they do like their beer pong. We're going to talk about this week's issue. Why not? Let's do this. Cool. Well, in this week's issue, Bullet for My Valentine, prepare for phase two of world domination. We reveal everything you need to know about the hottest incoming albums 2007 has to offer, featuring exclusive interviews with Metallica, Avenged Sevenfold, Queen Cambria, and more. I'm looking forward to hearing what this band more sound like. A little like Angels and Airwaves, or um, uh, As I Lay Dying, or um, Every Time I Die, I think. Cool. Uh, we left the Every Time I Die album playing on the office stereo. Very good. What do you think? Loving its work. Big fan of the Southern Rock groove with a slightly hysterical edge. Yeah, yeah. They are slightly hysterical. In the issue, there's another chance to win a table at this year's Kerrang! Awards. That's the chance to sit down and enjoy the ceremony, not the actual table. I, we must I, stress if that. If I get to go and I get to sit at a table, I might sell my table on eBay afterwards <laughs> with your chance to win and bid and pay me for a table from this year's Kerrang! Awards. Uh, would, you, would it become self-assembled or would you... Just leave that to the, the lucky winner. Given what I've heard about the Kerrang Awards, I reckon it'll arrive disassembled, maybe due to the fact that a number of rock stars will have kicked its legs in. Or burnt it. Yeah, just I'm just going to sell some ashes on eBay, and it's up for you to believe, you know, what they're from. Cool. Will it include the tablecloth? Will it be Are wrapped up? Are Yeah, but they're normally set on fire at some stage by Slipknot. <laughs> All right, uh, perhaps not, not then. There. Okay. <laughs> The Haunted's Peter Dolving, uh, a fan of saunas in the Leeds area, reveals which songs changed his life. And uh, there's the comprehensive guide to all the gigs in this week's magazine. 
and uh, we're going to listen to uh, three slabs of mosh. Oh, they're not all moshy this week. Oh, really? I'm, I'm disappointed. Oh, no, two are. Right. <laughs> two of the three. It's known in the world as two thirds, I believe. Uh, first up. 66.6%. Yeah. First up on my. Recurring. Uh, first up on my musical list this week is a band that I'm bigging up in general wherever I can with pointless results, seeing as they're so far away. They're from uh, San Diego in California and they're called Underminded. Uh, MySpace.com forward slash Underminded. They've got a new album out now on Uprising Records called 11 colon 11. And this is a track from their moshworthy debut, uh, Lords and Wolves. There's a lot of wolves in the world of rock. I'm compiling a big list of general use of wolfage in rock. Be that in the name of a band or artwork or name of an album. We have Wolves, Wolf Mother, there's a band called Wolf, there's a band called uh, Wolves Eyes, I believe. F- um, from Autumn to Ashes have a wolf on their album. This track here is called Lords and Wolves. Of course, Gallows have an album called Orchestra of Wolves. There's also a wolf on the cover of um, a UK band called TVP, I think. There's a bunch of stuff. I'm compiling a list. If those of you want to uh, add to that list and help me out, just go along to um, MySpace. You'll find me there. Anything to do with wolves howling. Oh, every time I die, they've got a track called We Are a Wolf on their new album. It's just We apostrophe yeah. a wolf. We Are a Wolf done an amazing video for it apparently yeah and you'll be able to read about it soon in Kerrang magazine right back to uh, that song you mentioned Lords and Wolves that's the one let's press play all right on with the wolf theme do they um tend to kill chickens in the night no they're just all really hairy i think at around the full moon will a silver bullet stop these bands we'll have to ask bullets for my valentine nicely put and uh, what's next on the uh the katie parsons uh, smokesboard dumosh i'm going to play two bands now from reading in the uk uh, the first band called exit 10 that have been around for a while they're currently working on their debut full length highly anticipated by me um this is a track and some of the band no doubt oh probably they've probably been waiting around for a bit uh this is a track by them called perish in the flames can you do a hand gesture to uh describe that (laughs) nice thank you but it looked like you were tickling two small goats at the time but uh so that's (laughs) two, two wolves at once They are the metalers of Reading. Well, Silosis and Viatrophy, I think, are also from Reading, but Malefice are my favourite ones this week. They are from Reading. They have long hair, some of them, and beards, which is a great idea. I would have one if I could. What kind of beard would you have? Probably some horrifically pretentious chin strap. Nice. Harking back to late 80s, early 90s, perhaps. Like an uh, Abe Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Or just massive sideys that turn into a little tash. Or I think, actually, scrap all that. I'm going to have a pencil tash. I think I've discussed this with you before. What's that relatively camp gentleman called? John Waters. Yes, that, I'm having one of his, please. His, his films really are Hooper. That's the sort of moustache I'm going to go oh. for next week. Would you be a bounder? Do you think you'd turn into a bounder with a moustache like that? You're saying, would I become promiscuous if I had a pencil moustache? Given that I'm a woman with a moustache, at that point I would probably drop off the love net altogether. <laughs> no, there's there's definitely a market out there. Uh, In Thailand, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thailand. Anyway. How I miss you. Malefice, they've got a new album called Entities, which is out now through Anticulture Records. Um, they are also playing a show at the Boardline, which is like an anticulture party, which is for 16s and over, I believe. 27th of July at the Boardline, or myspace.com forward slash 
Malefice, and the track I'm going to play, Eeny Meeny Miny Mo, Risen Through the Ashes. And what would that be with a hand gesture? It looks like you're t- touching the, the back leg, a haunch of a the, wolf. I'm tickling the undercarriage of a hairy wolf. Okay, let's, let's move on. <laughs> That's it for this week's podcast. Thank you very much, Miss Parsons. So what's the next gig you're going to be um, hurling yourself around like like a pierced marmoset? Oh, good times. I'm just imagining myself really small and hairy with stripes now. Or is that something completely... Is that a marmoset? Or is that... What's them things that do this? Uh, nosy neighbours. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, the next bunch of shows that I will be throwing myself at like a furry wildcat um, are probably the Kerrang uh, Day... Well, it's a Kerrang Day of Rock. Oh, was that a meerkat you were doing just yeah, before? Yeah, meerkat, that's it. Kerrang Day of Rock, that's happening on August... No, it's, yeah, August 8th. We hadn't even really spoken about it. It's in this week's Kerrang magazine, you can find all the details. But Enter Shikara will be playing, and Fight Star, and Tourist Ass, and The Answer, and Kids in Glass Houses. And so it's just going to be awesome fun. And apparently there's a barbecue, so I get to jump and eat at the same time. But not onto the barbecue. That would no, be quite my, painful. That's my technique. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's like... You heat me up and then I mosh harder. <laughs> right. uh, to what temperature? Uh, 79F. Cheers. In Celsius? And it's probably actually quite tepid, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's quite warm. I can tell you 117 degrees F is 47 Celsius. Is that how hot it was in Vegas? Uh, it was uh, the, a few days before I arrived, which is the hottest day in Vegas recorded history. But you'll be able to read all about that. Uh, Panic at Disco, showing us around their hometown, and but I won't I won't dwell on how much money I lost. <laughs> but beer pong, please try it if you're over 18. Bye. Bye. <laughs>